Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Good Audio Gear Reviews. And today we'll talk about uh, pretty recently announced and recently released uh, FIO Q7. It's their flagship portable digital to analog converter. First, uh, when they introduced uh, the basic ideas, it was referred as Q9, but then they decided to lower uh, number a little bit to Q7. You know, I, I don't know what this means, maybe they planning to release some even better portable digital analog converter or just uh, because 7 is a lucky number, it's not that important. Uh, most important here is uh, that it is ultimate device and few actually refers it as uh, uh, desktop class portable amplifier and it's basically true uh, i will talk about this a bit later when we'll come to sound and uh, in terms of specifications it's a real monster here use 9038 ess uh, sabre chip as digital tonal converter dual t chic amplifiers uh, basically almost the same setup as with fuse m17 but uh, price here is much more affordable, while M17 costs, I don't remember, $1,700 or so, this one is just $750. Of course, it's also not that cheap, but taking into account uh, uh, set of features, uh, driving power and uh, uh, actually the sound, bit spoiler here, it's a pretty reasonable price. You're basically getting sound that is close to M17 without Android and player functionality for much less. And of course, uh, Fio also used here all best uh, components like XMOS for USB interface, uh, Qualcomm chip for the Bluetooth and so on. They implemented their own uh, firmware here, I will show you men menu a bit later. And basically it supports Bluetooth, tons of different inputs and outputs, uh, and uh, it delivers up to 3000 milliwatts, or plainly saying 3 watts of uh, power, when, con when it's connected to the DC power source. From battery it's also a pretty good number, so definitely enough power to drive almost every headphones on the market, with few small exceptions, but anyway. So enough talks, let's have a closer look. As you can see, box is pretty simple, looks really attractive. I praised Fio's packaging style in the previous review, so I won't do it once again. I like this sense of slow but sure sliding of the box from the lid and uh, on top of course we getting uh, device itself but let's go deeper so i want to remove this part without tearing it so i should be careful then some explanation about rubber bands in the accessory set, some papers here, and you getting this famous desktop stand with cooler. Few words about this stand, also a bit later. And that's it. So here is a pretty big box with accessories. Inside you'll get a lot of exciting stuff. USB Type-C to USB Type-C long cable, for example, for MacBooks. Lightning to USB Type-C cable for iPhones. Angled USB-C to USB Type-C for some modern Android device. Then long regular USB Type-A to USB Type-C cable. I suspect it's the one to use for charging for convenience. So, USB Type-C to USB Type-A adapter and external power brick to use it in the DC mode. And so, here are silicone sticky pads. Few suggest uh, putting them on the side of the case because uh, uh, K 
case is pretty loose and to click the button you have to press a bit more actually it's not an issue for me because for me it's buttons have just normal amount of travel travel sorry even in the case uh, but uh, some people were not happy with this amount of tra travel i'm saying amount of travel because i often use it but you can glue this uh, rubber thing over the buttons and they will be more clickable but actually it makes more sense just to uh, take and uh, glue them here below these buttons they will be in case and when you use it uh, caseless it won't spoil you the outlook of this device as for desktop stand actually it's uh, pr pretty convenient to use it so here it is like really comfortable use case scenario and actually putting M17 on its own stand right, just aside is also pretty nice desktop setup and a lot of people actually were like bragging over the internet saying that uh, what is the sense of the device if you need to carry this uh, portable cooler with you it's senseless but actually you will need this cooler mainly in the DC power power mode and on the super high and ultra high gains in the battery use when you use it with battery and doesn't uh, activate uh, high uh, high power modes it stays pretty cool so no need to use it basically in vast majority of scenarios there is no much sense in uh, rising uh, gain too much and you can definitely enjoy it without the stand and without active cooling so this stand is not that mandatory as some tries to portray and anyway on the disc on the desktop i really like that you getting stand as for fan it's up to you oh actually i've got an idea so this separate usb type c cable is for powering this uh, fan you know like i fig figure out myself it's right now so, as you can see, accessory set is pretty big and don't forget a uh, pretty nice le leather case. Actually, it was improved comparing with few M17. It opens from the upside and now it has Velcro to hold this flip properly. In terms of design, it really reminds M17. Almost the same size. Actually, Q7 is few millimeters longer. But in general, approach to the design is really common. They probably use same same 3d uh, 3d file to create this uh, case is just slightly altering it but in this case i think it's a good uh, idea to demonstrate that actually these two devices offering uh, similar sound experience so here on the left side you player has more buttons here we've got just uh, multicolored uh, indicator and uh, cooling holes and on the top you can see same uh, set of outputs uh, 6.3 millimeter 3.5 millimeter and uh, 2.5 and pentacon pentacon 3.5 and 2.5 millimeter balance so you can connect uh, all desired outputs and uh, almost all of them can work as a line out D there is a difference between this volume knobs because in m17 use the potentiometer so it has limits of rotation and it can be stopped but here for the digital to analog converter few used decoder so it rotates freely with really good well-defined clicks and perfect uh, reg registration of that clicks and also it's uh, tappable i will show a bit later uh, the purpose of that and here are just four buttons on off and three buttons to control playback on the bottom we've got all necessary inputs so coaxial and optical input then uh, it's uh, dc power input uh, reset hole but i'm not sure if it will be re really used and the uh, usb type c to connect uh, data charge it and so on actually speaking about the charge despite the huge power even on the super gain 
it, it works about 9 hours from balanced output and uh, more than 11 hours from single-ended output, just really good figures. Of course it depends on the load, with something tough to drive it could be a little less, but in uh, like reg medium or regular gain uh, you can get even more work time, so in terms of work time it's pretty impressive. But of course in this size they fit a really big battery. And also there are two toggles, one is to uh, turn uh, on and off USB charging when you connect it to let's say a smartphone, you probably won't like if it starts charging from the smartphone. And here you can select should it be powered by internal battery or by DC adapter. In general, build quality, look and feel, and design feels uh, feels really well built. On the uh, front panel, actually let's first look at the rear panel, they used some kind of fox leather with uh, this uh, soft texture. I suppose that it will be durable. Of course, Fios M17, this triangle pattern looks cooler, but it's also more fragile. So, here you can see the interesting uh, uh, insert of glass and small screen at the top size. It just, it's, it's really small, but in general I think it's enough for digital to analog converter. It displays current volume, uh, selected gain, mode, additional information and on the bottom also volume. So, short press allows you to change, uh, change the input. USB, optical, coaxial or Bluetooth. When you select one, actually you can see that uh, indicators changing color here and here, uh, depending, uh, meaning that it's waiting for connection. Then it, they will be displaying uh, sampling rate of files used. And after the long press, you can get to main menu, so here is gain, you can select uh, four levels of gain, low, medium, high and super high. Then single ended output, should it be line out or headphones out, balanced output same, uh, should volume be regulated on the line out or fixed, maximum volume you can say set here, to actually good idea to protect uh, your ears when you using some sensitive uh, earphones because one of my subscribers told me the story when uh, iFi Griffon actually burned his Andromedas uh, when he accidentally uh, toggled uh, gain switch. Here you can limit it with max volume and also on the high gains few built interesting feature when you disconnect uh, connector and then connect it back volume will be increased gradually, so it will be slowly increasing during 6 or 7 seconds, so giving you an opportunity to understand that it's going too high and react, in case if it was uh, too high. And here is separately activating ultra high gain, but actually probably it's better to go back and select low. For ultra high gain you need DC power anyway. Filters, just familiar set of filters of ESS digital tonal converter. Then you can select brightness of screen, timeout of screen, USB audio mode, so you can select USB Type-C 2.0 for better uh, for better speed, or you can select. Uh, uh, USB uh, 1.0 for some old devices. Also you can select English or Chinese language, do reset and see the firmware version. But it's basically the, uh, the first version. Uh, firmware here will be upgradable via Bluetooth connection you can upgrade. You will be able to upgrade firmware for the Bluetooth chip and uh, in the uh, by USB you can update uh, XMOS chip and the basic stock basic firmware. We'll see probably FIO will add more interesting features or some improvements. Traditionally FIO added the possibility to control this device remotely when you connect uh, to it via Bluetooth. 
you can use uh, Fio control application or uh, device control inside of Fio music. It's traditional, you connect to the device, uh, new versions of applications detect uh, Q7 automatically, you select it and here you can change the pattern of uh, status indicator, you can off set it to default or you can select a multicolor gradient and uh, channel balance uh, and also here you can select Bluetooth codex you'd like to use. Also here in settings you can select Bluetooth version, customize device name, uh, try to up upgrade firmware, so online upgrade, no, no upgrades yet and reset device pairings. Also here is equalizer, so far it's just linear, May, most probably few will add the parametric equalizer in future, because they've uh, added this feature to the uh, BTR7, here it will be also supported, I'm pretty sure here. Uh, but of course it's not 100% guaranteed. And as usual you can download manual to learn about uh, basic features of the device. So just uh, basic things you need to control and uh, are here and it's pretty convenient. And of course about the sound, uh, I built improvised setup, I tested it with a lot of headphones including full size and the earphones, but just for illustration purpose I decided to put here Unique Melody Mass 2. And I will be using M17 to show some examples, uh, now they are connected by Bluetooth, but of course to get the full potential you need to connect it via USB or coaxial, and I will describe uh, sound for the USB connection, definitely, because uh, for the Bluetooth you'll get a reduction in sound quality, it's unavoidable, now we still don't have lossless Bluetooth codecs. So, in terms of sound, actually it's really close to M17 and if you want M17 sound but for less money, Q7 could be a good option. M17 is tiny bit better in terms of separation and staging but uh, signature is about the same and so-called level probably can be considered pretty similar because it's also a natural device with good amount of micro details but at the same time with a crazy great dynamic thanks to the powerful and uh, well designed amplifier basically meaning that you get resolution but at the same time sound will be pretty emotional uh, but not over boosted so bass goes to the maximum depth it's perfectly controlled it's even you know dull to explain it uh, has good speed but at the same time it uh, doesn't try to sound uh, dry or super analytical, but at the same time all the nuances you will get. And uh, it won't uh, try to boost weight or like punchiness, so basically what is in the record you get. And if you used to some bass boost, probably you'll have to use equalizer. If you decided not to implement bass boost here, in my opinion it's a good idea, because if you need bass boost, you need to get uh, more bassy earphones. But it's just in my opinion, of course, I'm not saying that it's 100% correct. Bass is deep, uh, with great impact when it's necessary, and at the same time it's uh, well controlled, so it's not trying to move forward when it's not necessary. And uh, let's see some examples. First one, it's uh, Bring It On Home by Led Zeppelin. You know, it's fun, a lot of people like Led Zeppelin because of uh, great guitar part, uh, everyone respects uh, plant vocals and a lot of uh, uh, considering gra great drum work, but actually bass like stands a bit behind other instruments in terms of recognitions, but bass lines of course are also skillful here and uh, masterfully performed and uh, actually this track demonstrates it uh, pretty well and uh, thanks to the great technical level of this amplifier it sounds really lifelike. And uh, second example, just classical example, it's of course not testing track or some reference but it's just good demonstration of uh, punchiness, driviness and tightness of bass when it's necessary. This amplifier definitely nails 
one of the most favorite bass uh, riffs in the history of the music and for me it's also fun example like uh, Queen decided to create a disco song and they greatly succeed here. And uh, mid frequencies, it's also pretty dull to explain, they're technical, they are really detailed uh, but not focused on the micro contrast. Uh, we, uh, device build stage really impressively, it's big, spacious, both in width and in depth, it's not trying to boost it, but at the same time it offers great layering, positioning, size of instruments are also ok. It's uh, not uh, fo focused on the micro contrast, but still good well recorded material will be a great plus here, because it's not trying to hide some issues or to add some emotions or or like uh, artificially boost dynamics. But at the same time, when track has properly recorded emotions and dynamics, it will deliver them really great. It's a great experience. You know, it's probably I can say that it's a uh, flagship uh, uh, player's level in terms of dynamics and control. And at the same time, uh, it doesn't try to add weight or color sound some way, so uh, keep that in mind. And first example track, actually it's one track to rule them all, it's Pink Floyd, Echoes. Well, 23 minutes, one of the greatest tracks in the history of Pink Floyd. And it's like a messenger that informed everyone of changes to come. It was like predecessor of Dark Side of the Moon, uh, Wall and other uh, stuff that will came later. Lot of things going on here, including that uh, part that Andrew Lloyd Webber stole uh, for his uh, Phantom of the Opera, but it requires good technical performance and this player delivers that nicely. And of course during the fast and uh, emotional parts it's just a masterpiece. And second example. Pretty interesting one, I like this super group, actually they released two albums, so it's like a united team of greatest uh, Scandinavian vocalists. And uh, they create great covers of different popular songs, so first album is true masterpiece if you like heavy metal vocalists. Second one was actually much weaker and after second one they just disbanded, unfortunately. I, I'd like to see the third chance. And Brother in, Brother, Brothers in Arms, it's a pinnacle of this album, lot of uh, types of vocal, different tonalities and uh, instrumental uh, is moved to the second stage, so vocals are taking the front part. And thanks to the great performance and the great representation of emotions by this uh, device, it uh, will give you all the nuances easily. And uh, about the treble, actually technical, well extended, not uh, recessed, not boosted, just linear, great, uh, with great control, with great layering, giving you good overtone saturation and uh, and uh, basically layering, airiness and all that uh, high-end stuff in terms of travel. And first track it's Cassandra Wilson, another country like uh, guitars that goes to the uh, high frequency area with overtones, great vocal also filled with overtones and so on. And it's like typical audiophilic track that then this uh, uh, portable digital tonal converter plays really well. And last example, it's Mars Volta, Imago, actually it's here because of percussions, a lot of them and they are pretty gentle and of course uh, Q7 managed to deliver them without overdoing or over softening or something like that. And uh, in terms of pairing, as you can pretty easily understand, it's uh, pretty universal. It drives almost everything, including high impedance, like there are a few models that are still created for desktop usage, but actually the rest of uh, headphones it nails and play, delivers, uh, drives without any issues. With super sensitive in-ear monitors uh, I can hear a bit of uh, noise, but actually switching to lower gains helps to minimize it. But with regular earphones in terms of sensitivity and uh, 
and uh, impedance it uh, gives you it gives a good black background and uh, speaking about the comparisons unfortunately i didn't try i5 uh, diablo for example i only tested griffon and in my opinion this player uh, this digital converter is better it's more natural it's more natural it's better in terms of dynamics and it's less colored uh, delivering uh, more audiophilic sound but a lot of people probably could like uh, ifi's uh, lot of different tuning options toggles and so on so to summarize everything here really good digital tonal converter giving you the sound that is pretty close to m17 but at a much uh, lower price uh, i'm not sure uh, actually i'm pretty sure that it's not a mass market product because uh, usage scenarios are limited but for those who would like to enjoy good sound with uh, for a lower price and ability to carry it with you in backpack it could be a really good option thank you for listening and have a great day